It's finally summer here, and that means that it's the perfect time to do a minimalist wardrobe reset. So today I thought I'd guide you through the steps that I use to declutter and maintain my year round capsule wardrobe. Putting your closet decluttering routine on autopilot not only helps keep your wardrobe clutter free, but it also makes your life so much easier. And the best thing about these wardrobe reset tips is that they are so fast and easy to do. This minimalist wardrobe reset is something that you can do in five minutes here or there instead of needing to do a massive closet clean out where you're pulling everything out of your wardrobe and spreading it all out. So it's really good for people who are short on time. And we're gonna jump right in with step one, which is to start by purging last season's clothing. So because we're entering summer, that means that I would go back to my fall and my winter clothing and I would kind of go through and see if there was anything that I didn't wear last season because if I didn't wear it that previous season it's unlikely that I'm going to want to be reaching for that item in the next season when it rolls around again. Of course if it's a special occasion outfit that you keep for something like weddings or events, then by all means, feel free to keep those kinds of things. But for example, when I look at this sweater, I know that I didn't wear it at all in the last season and 10 times out of 10, I was reaching for my beige oversized hoodie instead. So I know that I'm going to be okay with getting rid of this because I didn't wear it in the previous season and I'm probably not going to wear it next season either. These stretchy pants are almost 10 years old, I think, and they've gotten so worn out that the fabric is starting to stretch thin and kind of pull apart in places. Have you ever bent over and had your pants split apart? Well, I have, and I am not interested in having another wardrobe malfunction like that again, so I am going to also declutter this pair of pants as well. The next step is to turn around the hangers on your clothing. And this is a popular decluttering hack because it takes very little time to do. And that way at the end of the season, it allows you to quickly see which clothes have gotten worn and which ones didn't. And it's a really good way to give yourself a reality check about what you are and are not wearing. Of course, it's a lot easier to do this if you only keep the clothes for the season that you're working on. However, there are two reasons why I don't do this in my wardrobe. Number one is because I simply don't have the space to pull out and store off season clothing because we live in a 100 year old home with no closets or basement storage. And I don't want to store off season clothes under the bed because I like to keep the underneath of the bed nice and clear. So I keep everything here in my wardrobe all year round. And the second reason is because we live in a four season climate and there can be huge fluctuations in temperature where it might be 50 degrees one day and 90 degrees the next. So if you're like me and you're working with a small amount of storage space in your wardrobe, what you can do is you can do like I did and turn all of the seasons of your hangers around at once, or you could also split your wardrobe so that one side is warm weather clothing and the other side is cool weather clothing. And that way you're only turning the hangers around for the seasons that you're working on right at that moment. Because if you want to embrace a minimalist lifestyle, I believe it is essential for you to work with the space that you already have. And by the way, if you want more reality-based minimalism and decluttering tips, I'd love to have you hit the little red subscribe button and ring the bell to turn on all notifications so that you don't miss any of the helpful videos that I share here on this channel every week, where I share the A to Z of decluttering your home and simplifying your way to a life that you love. Now on to the next step. Step number three is to revisit your time out box. And if you're not familiar with the time out box, it's basically a bin or container where you can put things that you're unsure if you want to declutter or not and set them aside for a period of time to come back to later and see if then at that point you might want to declutter them. So at the end of last season, I put a pair of jean shorts in my time out bin and now that we're going into summer, as I'm pulling them out and revisiting them, I realize that I'm no more likely to wear these shorts now than I was a year ago. And nowadays, I tend to go for clothes that 
fit a little bit looser and that are made out of fabrics that are a little bit lighter and more breathable. So although these shorts are really cute and I paid a lot of money for them once upon a time, I have to be honest with myself and know that it doesn't matter how expensive something is or how useful it could be if I don't actually use it. And if you have trouble letting go of things because you feel guilty and worried about wasting money, I encourage you to go check out this video about seven mindset shifts that will help you let go of clutter that's not adding value to your life. And another habit that I started using to reset my wardrobe is to swap out accessories by season. So what that looks like for us is tidying up and storing away all of the items from the previous seasons that we're not going to be using anymore and switching around a few of the boxes and bins in our entryway so that everyone in the family has better access to the shoes and accessories they need for the correct season. So what I do is I make sure that our coats and scarves are nicely folded and tucked away and then I move those up to the higher point in our entryway storage unit and I move the summer items like our sun hats and the swim caps and goggles that my boys need when they go swimming down lower so that we all have better access to them when we're ready to get out the door. While I'm doing this, I'm also keeping an eye out for items that might be broken or that my boys have outgrown. Like for example, this sun hat that my oldest son says no longer fits him and you can see has gotten completely worn out and torn here. This is something that I can very quickly and easily declutter. And then there are two pairs of shoes that I've already added to the clutter bucket in my office that my youngest son totally destroyed. My kids are so hard on their shoes and clothes. It is unbelievable. Look at this, Didi is a toe dragger. I mean, how is this level of damage even possible? The fifth step is to refresh and repair clothes that you still love, but that need a little TLC. So for example, my husband recently started a new job and that means that not only is he going to have to be traveling again, but he's also going to have to be dressing in business casual clothing that he hadn't been wearing for a long time because of the situation in 2020 and then the year where he lost his job. So it was time for him to get back into his business clothes. It's time for business. It's business time. But they needed a little bit of a refresher. Now my husband is also a minimalist and a lot of his clothes are years and years old like mine. And although they're mostly in good condition, they do tend to get a little bit stained around the collar. So what I did was soak them in a little bit of hot water with some vanish powder, which is basically like the OxyClean version here in Europe. And then I laundered them and hung them up to dry and voila, they looked brand spanking new again. And then I also went through my wardrobe and found some things that I needed to mend myself. For example, this 10 year old maxi dress that I've had since I was pregnant with my son. And as you can see, the seam had torn a bit. So I went in and I did a little bit of mending to fix it and make sure that the rip wouldn't get any worse because I know that when I find clothes that I love, I want to take care of them so that they last as long as possible. So that means knowing how to launder them and how to make small mends really helps my clothes last longer and has saved me a lot of money in the long run. Step number six is to fill in the gaps in your inventory. And this is one way that having a minimalist wardrobe really makes your life easier. Because when you have such a low inventory of clothing, it's really easy to pinpoint the gaps in your wardrobe that let you you know it's time to buy new clothes. Because let's get real here, no matter how minimalist your wardrobe is or how well you take care of your clothing, there's going to come a point in time where you're going to want to add some new items to your wardrobe. So when I notice that there are key pieces or certain items missing from my wardrobe, I'll keep an eye out for ideas and inspiration and I'll save them to a Pinterest board or I'll put them in the notes app on my phone. And then after a waiting period, I'll see if I'm still interested in making that purchase. And when I'm ready to buy, I'll make sure to choose colors that I can mix and match with what I already have in my wardrobe. Like for example, I found this adorable two-piece set and I really like the blue shirt that I could dress up or down and layer underneath or on top of some of my other clothes. And I also really like the shorts and they'll let me swap out this old pair of shorts that got a little bit stained when we were doing some maintenance to our house when we were first moving in and I got some tongue oil on the backside. And by the way, that happens to be part of the next step on this list, which is to use the one in one out rule to keep the inventory in your wardrobe nice and balanced. So now that I've found this pair of cozy and breathable blue shorts, I'm going to be able to let go 
of this pair of shorts that is no longer something that I feel good in or feel comfortable wearing. And adding this minimalism rule into your decluttering routine isn't just a good way to keep your wardrobe tidy, but it's also good for your budget as you're only buying things when they need to be replaced instead of shopping on a whim. And I recently used the one in one out rule to replace a pair of shoes that I had to declutter because they got too worn out. And if you want to know more about that purchase, how much money I saved and see all 25 of my top favorite extreme frugal living tips that will actually help you save money like a minimalist, make sure to go check out this video or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.